In the last post, I spoke about interpretations, and, and now I want to kind of talk about the interrelationship of facts and interpretations. Like I said in the last post or two, no one acts on the facts, but they do act on the interpretations that the facts give rise to. So we also talked about grounding in the last post, and I want to kind of explain a little bit more about how do you ground an interpretation, and then I want to talk about the big collapse, what happens when people collapse the interpretations with the facts, and the facts then are represented by interpretation. In other words, interpretations are masquerading as facts. Let's talk about grounding. Let's talk about uh, what does it take to ground an assessment. The first step is, for the sake of what am I making this assessment? What is my concern? What am I dealing with? So, all assessments are made for the sake of action. I mean, relevant assessments are made for the sake of action. So, you have to understand what concern you're, you're dealing with and, and what actions you know, are you going to be taking that makes it important for you to ground the assessment. The second question is, uh, in what domain am I assessing? And what does that mean? That means, for example, you're looking to hire a sales executive because your sales executive left, and then you look to your sales force, and you, um, you pick the best salesperson in your sales organization and uh, make them a sales executive. You've made an assessment, but the question is, was that assessment well-grounded? It could be yes, it could be no. And you could jump to the conclusion that if you're the best performer in, your, in sales, then you're going to be an effective sales executive. That is not necessarily the case, and you're not really necessarily looking at uh, the right domain for assessment. For example, you should be looking at the domain of sales management, sales uh, leadership, and you're comparing to somebody who was a successful salesperson. Now, could that person be a uh, successful sales manager? It depends. If they, for example, led some sales teams and they did a great job leading sales teams and, the, and they were uh, you know, very uh, powerful in their sales leadership, then you're making that assess assessment. And given the fact that they were good on sales teams, you, know, you, you might draw the conclusion that they'll be good as a sales executive. Now, at the same time, if, um, if you make a mistake in that assessment because you, you judge it in one domain, sales performance, versus another domain called sales management, you can wind up with a poor sales manager and a, um, and, and a loss of a good salesperson. The next question is, what are the standards for assessment? You know, what's the criteria by which I'm going to make this evaluation? And given those standards, what are the facts? What facts do I have to support this assessment? Is there any other facts or any other factual um, basis for uh, possibly seeing uh, alternatives to this assessment. So as you can see, the whole grounding process is not trivial. It, it, it really does require you to look at uh, the assessment from a variety of factors uh, and, and also make sure you have some factual basis to support the assessment. And finally, um, can you look to anyone else to help you in making your assessment? Are there other people with other alternative points of view or even supportive points of view that could uh, provide uh, you know, uh, a better sense of grounding to the assessment you're, you're trying to make here. So that's the grounding process. Now let's talk about what happens when you confuse the, the interpretation, the assessment with, with the facts that matter. So I call this the big collapse. So if something happens, you know, an event occurs, what happens is you uh, you experience that event and then you essentially bring meaning to that event. So you make up a story about that event. And then you hold the story as, as truth. And then you forget you made up the story. Then you live out of the story that you made up and you, you defend the truth of that story. All of this happens in, in language. And when people begin to collapse their experience or their interpretation or the meaning they bring to the event that happens and they deal with that meaning, as if it's true, then you lose a certain amount of uh, objectivity in, in the situation and in the relationship. And to a large extent, this is a, a major cause of, of suffering, uh, personal relationships as well as in, in, the, in the corporate world. In the next post, what I'll be talking about is the next step in the uh, speaking map, and that is expresses, feelings. 
you know, how people express their psychological state, and then what triggers that expression? What, what, what are the key ingredients uh, to that exp expression? So essentially, we're also going to be talking about what are real feelings and what are interpretations disguised as feeling statements.